Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put a video together today, just showing you investigating and fixing a fault on this 2017 Citroen Berlingo. It's the same as the Peugeot Partner. It's a 1.6 HDI. Uh, it's quite a common issue on these relating to the knock sensor. I'll just show you the faults that we've got on the dash on the center here. We'll put the scanner on it, show you what codes we've got on there, and we'll um, show you where the sensor's located, how to replace it, just how to do couple of quick tests on it as well and then we'll just run through if there's any coding to be done with a diagnostic machine after but if we just strike it up just because of the camera the lights are actually flashing when they are actually on permanently but basically we've got the engine warning light on permanently the rear lights flashing and we've got this engine fault message up on the display there so um, just before we get into the video if you haven't already subscribed to the channel just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content well, using the top down diagnostic machine again we've just done a full code scan just to speed things up a little bit and just show you the codes that we've got on there uh, basically we've got these three codes in there we can clear the codes but as soon as we strike it back up again straight away this communication code comes up which is actually a communication code with a knock sensor this p2200 is a knock sensor code and we've got this p3057 in there as well and um, these two codes don't come back straight away but once you've done sort of a mile or two down the road, they come back into it as well. So, um, But just for now, not going to clear the codes, just going to leave a minute till we've got the sensor replaced, just run for a few tests. And once we've done that, we'll get it connected back up, clear all the fault codes, and then just run you through everything a step at a time. So, uh, But we'll just get the car up in the air now, show you the knock sensor and how to do some tests on it first. So now that we've got the van up in the air, I'll just run you through a few bits from underneath. Basically right at the front here, we've got the Adler injector itself. And coming a bit further back, the exhaust on this one just goes up and over the subframe. Um, and then we've got a couple of pipes on the actual DPF itself, which run up in these uh, metal there and then go up in rubber to the actual DPF pressure sensor. Um, these do cause us, you can have quite a few issues with the pressure sensors and the pipes, you need to check there's no splits in them. Um, but the, but uh, on this one, we're just going to go straight to the knock sensor. Um, but just coming back from the DPF, you can just see we've got the knock sensor located here in the pipe. And all part of the knock sensor is the little ECU section as well, which is just tucked up here in this bit. Uh, just to get this off, all you need to do, what we'll do is just, um, just undo this 10mm there and you can get that down, it just sort of clips on on that piece there. Um, I'm just going to show you, just going to run through a few tests that you want to do first, just to get the connector off. I'm just going to do it with the connector on at the minute, but you just simply pull that tab back and you can push it in, pinch it up to pull the connector off. Um, but we're just going to do a few checks. At the minute I've just got the ignition on stage two, I'm just going to get the multimeter out. Basically this brown wire there, that should be an earth. We've got the black wire there will be the 12 volt feed in and these two wires there are the CAN bus wires and we should have about two and a half volts on each of them. I'll just put a, um, a screenshot up of a wiring diagram for, for you as well, just in case anyone wants to study it. And we'll just run through it quick and then I'll put it on there. But basically we've got the knock sensor here. We've got pin, pin one, which is the 12 volt, pin four, which is the earth. We've got this, which is the add blue pump and that's the ECU there. And you can see that pins one and four are quite straightforward, just one to the earth, four to the 12 volt feed. But pins two and three actually have a join in the wire and they go both go to the add blue pump and there is actually the same wire where it has a split off in it, which goes to the actually ECU as well. But I'll put a still screenshot of this on there if you want to uh, have a look at that. But just for now, we'll get the multimeter out and just show you that we've got the correct feeds to the knock sensor itself. So obviously the main fault codes that's, that's coming up is a communication issue. Um, we've had this quite a few times now and replaced quite a few knock sensors. So we'll just do them tests quick and then we'll show you how to replace the sensor. Uh, just before we get into that as well, just show you we've got a new genuine knock sensor. Um, we have tried fitting some aftermarket ones, but had quite a few troubles with them. You're best off getting a genuine one, really. Uh, I'll put some links in the description below, or you can click it on the link above to where you can get one of them from. A few tools that we normally use when fitting these. We've got a um, this, this crow's foot socket, which is 
nice and handy. It just gets a decent bite on it because they can be quite tight sometimes. And normally when the, the rear knock sensors are not, don't normally come out too bad, uh, the front ones can be a bit more prone to seasoning, but you can get these in a kit. Again, I'll put a link in the description to them, but you can get the get that with a thread chaser as well. So if it starts chewing the threads up, you can just use that to run down and just clean the threads up. And always keep a nut, which has got the same thread as well as a bit of a repair piece if we really need to go down that route. So, um, but we'll just do the test with the multimeter now and just run you through that. Right, so I've just tried to sort of set the multimeter up. I'm just doing this on my engine now. So I've just sort of hung it in place so you can see what's going on. I've just used the black wire on the multimeter. Just connected it up to the exhaust there. Just gripped it up with some more grips just to use that as an earth. Uh, and then we're just going to probe this. We're just going to check the earth first. So I've just set the multimeter on the continuity setting. All that will do is just when it's got continuity, we'll just make a bleep there. So, and you'll be able to see the resistance on the display. But if we just check the first pin, for the earth, which is the brown wire. So at the minute, the ignition's on stage two to test this. You can just see that we've got an earth. The resistance is slowly dropping. We've got about four ohms there. We know we've got an earth. Obviously, it might be a bit of higher resistance. Um, if it was on a real good earth, it might be a little bit lower than four. So um, we're going to go on to the voltage setting now. And we're just going to check the other three wires. So the, brown, the black wire there should be the 12 volt feed in. I'll just say at the minute that's quite low. I think it's just gone into the economy mode. If I do, I'll just nip up quick, just turn the ignition off and back on again. And that should then read 12 volts. Just do that quick. Right, so we're now out of eco mode. We just recheck it and see we've now got 12 volts there. And then on the middle two wires, the canvas lines, So we've got 2.5 on that one. We've got 2.5 on that one. So I know we've got all the right feeds that we need there. So we're just going to turn the ignition off now and then we'll just run you on to replacing the knock sensor itself. Right, so now that's out of the way, as I said before, so you've just got to wiggle this clip back. You can then pinch that up to get the connector off. All we're going to do is just undo this 10 mil. Should be able to pull that down and then we'll crack this nut off there. And um, so hopefully it comes undone okay. Sometimes it can be quite tight, but so not normally too bad, these rear ones. So we'll just have a go at that now and get it to get it off. The sensor's out now, did actually come out. 
Um, not too bad, but it was a bit tight, tighter than normally are. Sometimes once you've cracked them off, you can normally just sort of spin them out by hand, but I had to keep the bar on that to give it a good few turns to get it out. Um, because of that, I'm just gonna run the thread chaser down it. And they don't look too bad, but I'm just gonna run it down it just to clean them up as well. You can see sometimes it was really tight you'd sort of wind it a bit and keep backing it off and going again but it didn't go in bad at all so it's just clean the threads up on that now and ready to fit the new sensor into place uh, so we're just ready to fit the new knock sensor and uh, it comes with some ceramic paste on it ready and um, you can if you notice with the old one when i was undoing it it starts twisting all the loom around with it and the nut should actually be free spinning but they always seize on on the the old ones that have been in a while so um, so you can just nip this up. I always like to nip this up first and then just locate the wiring into place after anyway. So we'll just run that up now. I don't need a silly nip on the nut there, but it does want to be reasonably tight. Just to get this guard off the old sensor, really straightforward. It's just got these little clips. You just need to pinch them together just to... Uh, get it out off the knock sensor that's all So that's the knock sensor all fitted. As you can see, quite a straightforward job, really. I've just clipped it back into all the places, just make sure it's not chafing or catching anywhere on the heat shields there. Just reconnected it up, just put the little locking tab back in. Um, but now that that's on, I'm just gonna drop it back down, just clear the fault codes, and just have a look on the uh, diagnostic machine, see if there's any um, procedures to tell it that it's had a knock sensor in the coding or anything like that. So we'll just drop it back down now and get back in the car. Right, so we've now cleared all the fault codes. I'm starting to fresh now. And I'm just going to go in. I've just done a quick full scan after that. Um, we've got an airbag issue in there, which is obviously a separate fault. But the main ones where the codes are coming into, and these codes are coming straight back in as soon as we put the ignition on. At least the communication one was. The others were coming off after we'd struck it up and ran it for a few miles. But you can just see on all the other ECUs. I've got no issues there so we're just going to go into the engine one i'm just going to have a quick look about and just i'll run through it if there's anything there because there should be some options to say it's had a knock sensor and we might need to reset some of the denox salts or uh, denox faults or the add blue faults on there as well So I can just see, I'll just show you running through it. We're using the top-down diagnostic machine, but basically if we go into the engine ECU, we've got uh, some special functions there. We've got surface action, and work on the emission control circuit. And basically you want to do the reinitialization of the DNOX system faults. So if you don't, don't do this, you might still have the warning coming up um, with your countdown for your ad blue on there. So we're just going to run through that. Right, so you can just say as well, I've just done the first one for reinitializing the faults, but if you go into on the same thing further back, we've got a replacement parts option, uh, emission control circuit, and we've actually got one for the knock sensor as well there. So we'll just run through that same procedure on there as well. Uh, 
So that's done the reinitialization for the Dinox. So basically that's all we should need to do now. Now we'll just strike it up, just make sure it's okay. So we've just struck it up now. You can see that the engine warning lights off. We're not getting no messages coming up on there now. Um, so that's that's obviously fixed the fault. I so said that communication error is coming in straight away. But you do need to run through reinitializing them Dinox faults. If you don't do that, I just did just remember from earlier on, but we've had this before. It cleared the engine light, but it was still coming up with the AdBlue message about not starting in 300 miles. The way to stop that after you've done anything with the Dinox system is you've got to reinitialize them faults. And you will only be able to do that with quite a decent diagnostic machine. So this is the Top Don Phoenix Light 2 that we're using and we've had for quite a bit now. Uh, but so it's proven to be a really good bit of kit and it's got a lot of options on there for working on the AdBlue system. Uh, but all we'll do now is just give it a quick run as well. As I said before, the other two codes in there did come back after a few miles. I'm fairly confident this has fixed it, but I'll just go give it a quick run and then we'll just get back to you after and just let you know it's definitely fixed it. Right, so we just got back from road test. Actually did about five miles in the end and it ran absolutely spot on. So well confident it's definitely fixed the fault. So yeah, just a, another knock sensor replace. Fortunately, these are becoming a really common issue. Um, they are starting to come down in price a little bit now, um, but it seems to be the sort of ECU section of them that fails, communication error. So, um, but uh, yeah, hope you like the video. Hope it helps someone in the same situation. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out any of the other videos and we'll see you next time.